Grace and peace, all praise and glory to Jah, Yah, El, our Father, and His Son, Jehoshua the Messiah, the Nazarite, also known as Jesus of Nazareth, Yahshua, Yahawasha, Yeshua, Yashaya, Yahusha, also recognized as the Messiah, HaMashiach, the Christ, the Anointed. My name is Brother Sean, and I'm from the Zion Assembly of Jah and Jehoshua the Messiah. You can join us each Sabbath day, me and Brother Javed, as we do live Sabbath lessons on Saturdays at 5.30 till 7. And during Standard Time in November, it's from 4.30 till 6. Please, don't forget to subscribe, and if you like this video, please share. I want to get into Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 13, verses 7 through 10. This is just a short, brief commentary. Now, you saw me put up Zechariah, which is Zechariah, and Zechariah is H 2148, and it means Jehovah or Yah or Jah remembers. The word for remember is Zakar. And when we get further into the definition, we could even see that it says Jah has remembered, and it's pronounced also in the Strong's Zakarja. I just thought I'd share that brief bit of information. So, again, Zechariah 13, what time frame is this prophecy referring to? Is it referring to the future or the past? Let's get a read. Zechariah 13, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Jah, two parts thereof shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They, call, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, Jah is my El. Now we of the Zion Assembly teach that one third will be killed in the future, and two thirds will be saved and carried away to the wilderness. But here in Zechariah, we see it says the opposite. It says that two thirds will die and one third will be saved. So really, what's up with that? Now, what I've come to understand is that the prophecy from Zechariah 13 refers to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD or 4270 from creation, where we have one third was spared through that tribulation, but two thirds were killed. I do believe also that the end time prophecy for the tribulation is found in Revelation 12 and it shows that one third is killed and two thirds are spared. So when you look at these two diagrams here, you can see the bit of the difference. Now I've studied that these verses don't pertain to the last days before the Messiah comes, but it was for the last days before the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, and the final scattering of the Israelites out of the promised land. Zakarja chapter 13. Now we're going to go back and read again, but let's go now to the verse before verse 8 to get the full understanding. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. And against the man that is my fellow, saith Jah of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. So even though we read those verses before in Zechariah chapter 8 and 9 and 10, we see here in verse 7, we have more clarity and understanding about the situation. So we read in verse 8, and it shall come to pass that in all the land. Now, this doesn't say in all the world, but in all the land. Then we know the two parts cut off, the third shall be left in, and the third part will be brought through the fire. Now, in Matthew 26, you will see that this is where I believe this is the triggering of this prophecy that we find in Zechariah 13. It reads in verse 31, Then said Jehoshua unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. As well as in Mark 14, we just have the same reiteration. Verse 27, And Joshua saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. So again, when I see that this is a direct quote from Zechariah chapter 13, and it's referring to the Messiah, I believe that this is exactly this area of where this prophecy starts from. Now let's go to Mark 13 to get a bit of a backup to support what I'm saying. 
But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. So you have to have understanding to understand when these things are taking place. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Luke 21 verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So again, understanding when we were reading before about this land, we can see that it's referring to the land of Judea. And after the Messiah was stricken and he resurrected, the rest of the Israelites, 35 years later, went into some serious tribulation before the temple was destroyed. Verse 23, But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. So you see again, the great distress is in this land, and this is where the two-thirds are going to be killed. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So in understanding this prophecy from Zechariah, we can see it being fulfilled in the destruction of the temple, and the scattering of the Israelites in, in, uh, in 70 AD. As well as many were killed, but some were saved. Only those who listen to the Messiah regarding this prophecy. So again, I believe that the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD by the Romans and the persecution of the Israelites at that time signify Zechariah chapter 13 for the prophecy to be at that time and not the end. So what we see at the end in Revelation chapter 12 verse 4 is this, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. So when we look at this prophecy, we see that in heaven there was a vision of a woman who was crowned with 12 stars representing Zion, Israel, the nation of Israel, the 12 stars representing each tribe, and she was pregnant with Jehoshua. That's who the Messiah came from. He came from the Israelites. And we can see in Genesis chapter 26 that these stars of heaven are referring to the Israelites. Genesis 26.4 and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Exodus 32, verse 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed. So again, two verses with the stars of heaven. Deuteronomy 1, Jair Elohim hath multiplied you, and behold, you are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Deuteronomy 10, Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now Jadai Elohim hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Nehemiah 9, Their children also, plied, also multipliest thou as the stars of heaven, and broughtest them into the land concerning concerning which thou hast promised to their fathers. So when we look at these things, we can see that the stars of heaven, although many people say that they're angels, I do believe fully that the stars of heaven in Revelation chapter 12 are referring to Israelites and one third of them being slaughtered. So let's look at this again. Remember it says, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. When it's referring to his tail, it's the end time of him. Like the head is the beginning, the tail is the end. So this is an end time prophecy regarding human beings. This is not what you would call like a, a beginning prophecy regarding the devil taking one third of the angels out of heaven. No, he took much more than that. But let's get to Revelation 12 verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail 
drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. That means he was killing those Israelites, one third of them, and the other two thirds escaped. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So again, I just want to remind you that it's referring to the tail end that the, the adversary took um, the stars of heaven and he's killing them. It's not in the beginning. People teach in the world that the, the devil took one third of the angels. But trust me, he's not taking one third of the angels and then going to go try and war against heaven. Just like he did in this world, he's deceived majority of, of human beings the same way as well. He, was, he deceived and led astray many, many angels. Many angels. There are so many and there's multiplied millions left, but he took many away and they're here on earth moving around. And they're going to take and kill one third of the future Israelite saints and cast them to the earth. Revelation 12. And when the dragon saw that, the, that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman, Zion, Israel, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent, which is for three and a half years or forty-two months. And the serpent was cast, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The serpent here, what he's casting out is his orders for armies to go and kill the rest of those Israelites that have been taken away into the desert. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So Jah, just like how he did with the ancient Egyptians, how, he, how the waters opened up and swallowed all the host of Pharaoh, even the same way here, it's a repeat again. The earth opens up and swallows this great vast army of the devil that was sent to chase after the Israelites in the wilderness. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Jah and have the testimony of Jehoshua the Messiah. So this is where he goes after that one third and he gives them great, great tribulation and they are martyred in this area so i hope you got some understanding from this mini mini brief commentary the prophecy regarding zechariah 13 is for jerusalem in 70 a.d and the end time prophecy for the tribulation of the saints where one third of the israelite saints are killed and two are carried away is in revelation chapter 12. i hope you got some understanding I want to give all praise and glory to Jah, our Father, and His Son, Jehoshua the Messiah, the Nazarite who died for our sins, who also goes by various names that you can see on this screen, of which we have no contention, nor do we discriminate. But we do recognize many people cause a big fuss. Nonetheless, it is what it is. Again, be sure to check us out, the Zion Assembly of John, Jehoshua the Messiah, myself and Brother Javed, every Saturday, 5.30 till 7.00 or starting in November, 4.30 till 6. You can email me if you want at zineofjaw at gmail.com for any questions, concerns, comments, or any ideas for new lessons. I'm really open to that. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Bless up and one love.